but we're kind of waiting for somebody to do something. We're voting for people to do something. We're waiting, we're hoping somebody else will do something. So that was the reason why I wanted y'all to see that, because I, I, saw, I, I saw something a little bit different than just a story. And if you see the rest of this movie, it goes on. There's a lot more of that kind of stuff happening if you really watch. So, while we're here today, fixing what's wrong with all the school. First thing we'll do is I'll hear from you all what is wrong with the school. I'm going to get a pen, a big pen with a lot of water. <laughs> Who would like to go first? Because you know we got problems. Mama with the dog, you want to go first? <laughs> yes. Right. I don't. <laughs> you can't already fix it. We got to know what it is. The first thing is a lot of the people don't look like their kids. Oh. <coughs> Let's see. Different races. All right. What else? What else? Um, they had a movie back in the day called The Outsiders. Uh huh. They had a lot of outsiders. A lot of outsiders. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of outsiders. Yeah. I agree. What else? Dumb down for you. Dumb down for you. All right. Yes. Because of the different races and the lack of cultural understanding, we have too much of focus on discipline. Having discipline focus. All right. What else? Yes. For me, it goes with the oppressive history. Oppressive history. All right, what else? School prison fighting. Definitely. All right, what else? Overcrowding. Overcrowding. Mama Liz, you, I see your hand raised. <clears throat> um, it's not just that they're different races, they're not prepared. Mm -hmm. Not prepared. Mm -hmm. They don't even know how to teach. So, teachers not prepared. I guess a lack of respect of our culture. Yeah. Not respect the coach. Definitely. Lack of love for the students. Uh oh. Too much focus on standardized testing. Testing. Lack of common sense. Lack of common sense. For nutrition. For nutrition. Common sense. Oh, confidence too, huh? Yeah, you believe confidence. <laughs> <laughs> That confidence in our children. That's right. And you said poor nutrition? Yeah. Lack of spirituality. No spirituality. All right. No they, leadership. They, they, no leadership. They're still teaching lies to our children. Yeah, that's the curriculum, definitely. Yeah, miseducation, no doubt. Oh, that's not. Lack of confidence. Lack of confidence. No, no, uh, no consensus on the goals. Uh, uh, outcomes uh, for students. They don't care what the parents want. They just want to do what they want. Um, no consensus about what? No consensus on what now? Um, the, uh, the goals, goals and, and outcomes. Outcome. Okay. <coughs> what I missed. Oh, no parental. They don't care what the parents think. They're not okay. asking what the parents want. It's just what. Whose parents, agenda parents is it? That's the question. Whose agenda? Or community. Exclusion. Yeah. Input is that? Yeah. Input. Input. It's total exclusion. Yeah. Change. You can change that no to exclusion because they're not just not looking. They intentionally keep it. Okay. Anything else? Uh, not addressing. Not addressing trauma. That's the word. A lot of that. They over diagnosing our children with all kinds of behavioral. Over doping them, or just doping them up. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you be afraid of. Understand. Well, they were afraid, right? Yeah. So I can put fear up there. Got a couple of that. Yeah. All right. Right, but that's kind of like with the trauma portion. Different races. Does anybody ever wonder why in the world we even deal with these people? 
There's 160 hours in a week, all right, for everybody, including our children. The children are only at school for 35 to 40 hours a week. Agree with that, right? It's about right. But 40 hours max, pretty much, if they have a taste of some kind of after school issue. At least 128 hours that they're not around those white teachers that don't understand them. They're not getting minus ones and potentials and getting set out for 76% of the time. Y'all really? Mm -hmm. So there's some time in there, right? When they're kind of away from these people, that we can do something. So I'll read this if you can't see it. But it says, according to the University of Michigan Health System, on average, children ages two to five spend 32 hours a week in front of a TV. <laughs> Watching DVDs or playing video games. The cell phone that isn't even minutes, but y'all know it's big, right? Now that's two to five years old. They have parents, right? I mean, the, the children don't buy the TV. Okay, check it. All right. Now it says ages six to eleven, they average about twenty-eight hours. Now, these are children. These are children that have parents. This is what they're doing. This is not while they're in school. This is when they're not in school. All right? And it says there is a whole other group that spends, a third of them spend teenagers 40 hours a week. That's like a job. Watching TV, playing video games. This is real. So statistically, the average person watches about four hours of TV a day. So that's 28 hours each for them. That's two months nonstop for watching TV. Or by the time you're age 65 years old, nine years of your life. You know, TV, video games, that kind of stuff. They ain't got nothing to do with school. So I'm just I'm showing you that we got some time. Now, we know that children don't sleep. Because they can play a game. This, 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 the, according to the studies that you're supposed to get, you're supposed to get about 10 hours of sleep. Anybody need to get 10 hours of sleep? No. Well, the children don't eat. But it's supposed to. The kicker is, study, the studies show that if you sleep less than 7 hours, you have trouble concentrating. You're more prone to have mood disorders. Did y'all know about that? Some of y'all got some mood disorders. <laughs> All right. So, 40 hours of TV and games, 7 hours of sleep. That's if you're doing it right. That still leaves 18 hours, 7 days, which averages out to about 2 and a half hours a day that we could do something. Y'all agree with that? Independent of these schools. Now, talk about the options. Y'all mentioned something. First is public education. The word public is defined here as done, perceived, or existing in open view. So what I'm telling you is absolutely no secret, and this is nothing that I found under a rock. You can Google this information or go to any of these sources and find it for yourself. But, and it's, it's, I know it's a little bit dated, but not much has changed. 2013, 2012-2013 school year, 90 public schools in New Orleans, 
and they enrolled over 43,000 students. 84% of those schools were charter schools, 16% uh, were the all these parish school board. 90% of the children enrolled in these schools were black. Y'all know that, right? Okay, that's, that's one fact. 8% of the schools, of those schools, those 90 schools, 8% of them were A schools, 8% of them. 12% were B schools and 10% were C schools. But 35% of them were F schools. Did y'all know that? Remember, these are the schools that educate the children, our children, which is the most of the children, 90% of the children in the city. 35% of those schools are F schools. So they had 78,000 children that lived in there. So most of the children, most of the children were educated in this system. Okay. You know 90% of the children were black. Now, New Orleans this year, I think it was 2013, boasted a 78% graduation rate for black men. That was the highest in the country. Sounds good, even though 78 ain't not like 100%, right? But if they had a 78% graduation rate, how then are they still 52% unemployed? So that says what? The education that they got, got them, got them in poverty is what it's got. So the median income today, New Orleans, $25,102 for black folks. White families, $60,553. The median income. Ready? Y'all see the picture? Because you can guess. I just want to point out that most of those income ranges usually apply to a family of four. Yes. So when we're thinking about what that means for a single individual, $25,000 a year is not much. Right. So if you have four people in your household all for that money, then you really are struggling. So I just want to. She's completely right. That brings me to the next point. New Orleans is 29% poverty. The city in that today. 29% poverty. Now, that's relevant because the state poverty rate is 16%. The national poverty rate is 15%. So what does that mean? That poor people in New Orleans are twice as poor as poor people anywhere else in America. So I'll Now there's the private school option. Private is for the use of one particular group of people only. That's what private means by definition. About 22,000 students are enrolled in private schools here. 63 of those schools, 54 of those are religious based. I know a little something about all of them, the public schools, the private schools, and so forth. Now the average tuition for private schools is $7,600. As, as Mama Liz pointed out, making 25 grand a year, can't, you can't explain this, okay? So that means you have to be in one of those 35% okay. All right, so the non-white students are 37% of the private school in the world. Non-white, doesn't say black, I wasn't able to find that statistic, but I would say it's probably less than 20%. Because again, that's a pretty, that's a pretty high price tag. Yeah, not long ago, Kermit Ruffins was saying something about how his daughter yeah. is at Ursula. And he's, he's spending about $1,100 a month. And I know he's not lying because my oldest daughter is 20 years old next month. She graduated from Mercy. And I knew I was going to say this for my daughter. I didn't. But he's saying he's paying this money and they're still putting racist things in her life. And the school say, we can't find it. Now, they really don't care if you pull out. This is $1,100 a month. You see what I'm saying? But he was trying to do what he thought was better to keep her away from the F schools and the C. So, but money for them don't fix our problems. Okay. Now, when they do get out of school, 60% of the professional positions here in New Orleans are held by white women. 60% of the professional positions, the good paying jobs, away from that, $25,000. 27% are held by our people. And many of them, that are our people actually did come out of the private school. Because that's where you get your, that's where some of the leaders come from, the private schools. Because they get exposed to some things that those in those F schools, 
they never even seen it. So they don't even know that everybody ain't living like in the, in the public school situation. So you get a handful of our people who are able to put that seven, six hundred or ten grand or whatever it is, but it's still a small number. Then, by no coincidence, white businesses here in New Orleans to black owned businesses are 62. Wow. But that would make sense, right? Because you got to have something up here to be able to do that, right? And you can't get that at an F school with people who are not like you, who are outsiders teaching you a dumbed down curriculum, right? With a heavy discipline. You can't, you can't, you're not going to become a business owner for somebody who is free. Because we did say that's what's missing, right? Free. Okay. Then there's this other option homeschool. Now home, we know what home is, right? All related to the place where one lives. Home schools. Now, just so y'all know, Louisiana's got a graduation rate of 71%. Again, it's not very high. And I heard somebody talk about the school to prison pipeline. We understand that people who are not highly intelligent are more likely to do what? Commit crimes. Find themselves in situations where they've broken the law because they're in poverty and they're desperate and then. They work for even less, right? Okay. But I, excuse me, I can also see that uh, people who are highly intelligent are likely to commit crime if they are in an environment that does not feed their intelligence. Agree. But our, the poverty <coughs> rampant in New Orleans is such an environment. That would put you, even if you are highly intelligent, right. you have a, a minimal options because your, the people around you are surviving and they're desperate and they're looking for access to this American scheme, right? So, now, last year, Louisiana, actually, the state, the state saw an increase in, in, in private schools. I'm not sorry, not, not private schools, homeschools, because a lot of the other folks don't like this kind of course. Thing. Not the people there in this room. Not the folks. Oh, no. Right? So they're pulling their children out of these schools. They are. And they're homeschooled. So I wanted y'all to know that there are, there are three options. This is the way we educate our children, because this is fixing what's wrong with New Orleans schools. Okay. Get free again? I have to say this. Not under the control or in the power of another. Able to act or be done as one wishes. Anybody in here free? Yeah. You got one sister that's yeah. free. Yeah. I got a, they got some people in there that's free. Uh -oh. So we just went over these existing educational options, and the reason they matter to everybody in here, regardless of what kind of school your child is in, is because black folks are still in the majority here in the world. Right? So Regardless of where your child is in this state, their peer group, the large part of their peer group is in this other system, this public education system that we said we got a serious problem with, right? Because of all the things that it's not doing for our children. So, we're going to do some work, and I'm, I'm pushing through a little bit just because of the time we started later. Our group work is this because we got small people in here. We're going to solve this problem ourselves because we know the other folks are not going to do it. Y'all agree with that? Right. Now, we just saw that movie that, remember, nobody was waiting on a, a board meeting or a government or anybody else to come in there and say, well, this is what y'all do. Because truth be told, all of these problems that are up here, and I hate to say it, but Malcolm X did say that only a fool. Yeah. And sin children to be educated by his name. Yes. Um, <clears throat> as you were saying that, I was thinking that the one thing we didn't include on here was our responsibility. Like, we know all of these things. Right. And we send our children here. Right. They, I read this article not too long ago that said, um, like, if you put your child in a room full of snakes, mm -hmm and your child was uncomfortable, 
would you explain to your child why they need to be there and get them to calm down and understand or give them a pill that will make them feel better about being with the snakes? Or do you take your child out of the snake's nest? Right. What are we doing when we know that these are the things that are being done to our kids and we leave them there? That's our responsibility. Right. Everybody agrees with Yes. And um, as much as myself and some other, I hate to use the term, non-charter advocates, mm -hmm. we found it the most difficult problem to convince a mass of parents to really understand what's going on and do something about it. And then there's the percentage that kind of sort of know there's a problem, but it's like, well, there's not enough home schools or private schools to send our kids to. And the churches aren't stepping up like in the 60s right. to be a leader, right. to provide somewhere. There are lots of educators because they fired us all after Katrina. So just something to think about. How do you convince the masses whether it's just, okay, as long as my kid has a school to go to, I'm fine. I don't go find out how bad it is. Or what is the real problem that keeps parents from acting, mobilizing, and acting? I mean, more right on than you know is terms of the um, Treating the masses uh, perception would be being that example. You know, if you if your child doesn't go to school, or if you seek out other individuals, or um, because homeschooling is not blasted, like you know, but you can use Google sometimes right. too. <laughs> oh, no. And um, you know, reach out to those individuals who are non-charter advocates as well. And like, just telling that parent, or if they, you know, do have that a strong belief in there, it's really, you know, harming a child, and they see it. Like, take your child out. Like, just let them be absent, and you spend that time, or you can, you know, detox the mind of that child. So there's nothing wrong with that child being free after it's been toxic for like five years if it's a fifth grade you know like all those all that time so it's nothing wrong with you know having that immediate transition it's okay for the child to be free so if that parent stands up and says no my child isn't going back that's like the best decision possible because that child feels like okay my needs are being honored as well and that parent feels like you know as well as uh, I'm not sending them back to the states, you know. Right. So that's powerful. That's powerful. We hold my brother and sister. Um, and if we just stop looking for handouts, and what you're trying to get numbers to get funded, squatting or money, you got everything you need. Like, you know, I agree. I agree. Well, just to counter, um, you guys are talking about how to bring the masses, what you have to understand is that the masses have, the masses have jobs. Mm -hmm. So the thing about it is, you asked the question earlier, who's free? I know I have a job. So at the end of the day, if you have a job, now what? There needs to, if, if you have people in the village doing transitional program, because that's the thing, you talk about handouts, but everybody in the country sends their kids to public school and they go to work. I mean, not everybody, but many. That's the reality, because we still got to eat. We got to pay our bills. And not everybody has an independent means of living. So that's, I mean, I don't think that people are sending their kids to school out of um, just being that blind or that ignorant to what's going on, but it's, almost a have to. It's a lesson of I mean you really yeah. have you know and what you but I'll just say this too, you know, just being an educator, one thing that I feel like is not done, a lot of people complain about the public school system, but if you go to a school board meeting nobody's there. Even those of us who are independent of independent means that could be there. Um when it's time to vote, people vote for president and big stuff, but they do not vote for the local representatives, nor do they sit down and talk with them, etc. and so forth. So, I don't see parents at school very much. I took my son out of school last year, and that's the problem I have. I work, so I can't 
I feel like if I'm failing him now because uh, he's at home and he's not a person that do, I have to stay on him and teach him, help him, and he's not going to just do it on his own. So it's really hard for parents exactly. to actually make that step. I took the step, but then what happens to him? So what does he do? He's at home, I give him assignments, but he's not the type of person to do it unless I'm over there. Yeah, coach I have the, well, really, really make him do it or threaten him, right. take something away from him. If I took her out, she'll be fine. She's bad when it's eight plus three, so I feel like she's okay. But for him, he was in a C school, but I just didn't like the teachers who were teaching him and just the things he was learning. So I think I would probably teach myself, but it's, it's hard. I know, I know that it is hard. Now, so, here's, so here's the thing. I'm not, I, don't, I don't want to rush anybody, but there's going to be a portion of this that's going, we're going to be able to do this very soon. The number one thing that I hadn't heard anybody mention, I know some people were thinking it is, with all that we're talking about, nobody's talking about how do we teach our children to be free people. I hear people talking about working inside of an existing system that is producing poverty, generational poverty, again and again and again. So you can go through the school, you can get the education, you can graduate, but you still don't have the money. You don't know nothing and you're still relying on somebody else to provide for you. And you, there's a whole nother generation that's doing that again. So what we're going to do is for our group work, and this is where you get a chance to put all this together, how is we're going to produce a method that teaches black children to be free. Because I don't know any school that does that. Well, let me say, that. I don't know any public school or any private school that does that. They don't teach black children how to be free. They teach them how to get jobs, or work for somebody else. They teach them how to obey. They teach them how to comply. But they don't teach them how to be free people. We are going to have to teach our children how to be free. Did anybody disagree with that? Okay, so that's the group work you all to do. So here's the criteria. Remember that two and a half hours we followed? That's if they're watching 40 hours of TV. That's if they're sleeping 70 hours. There's still two and a half hours if y'all are okay with what you doing. There's still two and a half hours every single day. So it's a parameter. There ain't no budget, because ain't nobody got no money. We don't have to create something like that. But there's, there'll be no interference with the existing school operations nor their administrative functions. This must occur outside of traditional school hours. It must be a measurable, it must be a measurable thing. Somebody said something earlier about test scores. That was one of the problems with The reason they're doing all these test scores is because it gives them data. And they can say our way works because yeah. we have this data. Right. Doesn't matter if they like, say we have that 78% black male graduation rate, and at the same time there's a 52% black male unemployment rate. Mm -hmm. So it don't really work, but they got data that said, but hey, 78% of that. So we did our job. Now, then the last part of it is also oh, it'll be measured through academic confidence, academic performance and self-sufficiency, of course self-esteem, because I heard somebody mention, even though it's not up there, how the children feel in the school. And then last, you must be personally willing to execute this. This ain't one of them what they need to do kind of thing. Because see, we got a lot of ideas when somebody else is going to do it. The question is, what are we willing to do? Are we willing to do like they did in that helicopter, and just go in there and get it? Or are we going to wait? And the other thing is it should be, it must be able to be duplicated. This isn't something that only you can do. So we're going to split up in the groups and do this particular group. Okay? All right, beautiful black people. I think we're done. Everybody ready? Is everybody ready? I got my phone. All right. So we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna start where we are. I guess we're going to start. Anybody want to go first? <laughs> All right. 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 everybody listen up, please. Give us your, give us your method. Remember what it was supposed to be. This is the method on how we teach our children to be free people. What do you have another moment with y'all came up with? Yes. Alright, so... Y'all listening? Everybody? Y'all yeah. yes. want to fix these schools, right? <laughs> Let's pay attention. Alright. Yeah. Okay, so some of the things that we felt like we needed to know were the general life skills, like, you know, how to pretty much operate as an adult. Uh -huh. 
self-awareness, um, understanding their history, um, you know, our history, self-reliability, uh, good character, finding and accessing the source of the world, and the world, and the Right. A lot of things that don't know where to look for what they're looking like. Okay. Um, communication skills and self-defense. Okay. And so our methods... So how do you want to do it? That's what we want to know. Our methods would be Saturday schools. Okay. They learn a lot of the, the knowledge, like the history and the good character and the resource and finding access to resources right. and opportunities. The after school programs would be where we kind of come in with um, um, self-defense and more like after school type thing. Okay. Things that take more like of their physical energy than their mental energy. Okay. And then breakfast programs are work on more social emotional oh. stuff. So okay. I can go before school to keep them, but not only their belly, but also their life. Before school? Before school. Okay. All right. Also some programs where all these things are kind of into one thing. Mm -hmm. And we also um, thought about our children that have mental and physical handicaps. Okay. Um, and, 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 you know, and offering therapy programs for them as well. Um, of course, we'll have a considered uh, curriculum and the whole thing to see that. Um, and to use it more like logistical, like right? how we're going to make it all the time. Okay. And some of the resistance that we need to foresee are um, uh, from coming from the community or of like people who would possibly think of bringing their kids, um, not trusting the model itself. Um, <laughs> Not wanting to take their kid from the school they're in because they're fairly satisfied and don't want to do that. Or maybe their kid is from the Not being able to afford it, not willing to sacrifice whatever needs to be. They have to get it. Okay. All right, everybody heard that? Yes. yes. All right, clap it up for that group over there. Yeah, it's about you. It's cool. <laughs> All right, so that's that's one way our children can learn to be free from our own people. Okay, here's another. Let's hear it. Who's the presenter? So we um, we identified what we need to know to be free. Um, we started with knowing our ancestors, yes. right. proper diet, uh, how to be self-reliant, um, having knowledge itself, and having emotional literacy. Okay. Um, some of the methods that we uh, advice for what we need to know, learning our own lineages, yes. um, learning math, African literature, possessing that, knowing that, uh, having uh, a healthy practice of eating, yes. exercising, uh, <laughs> learning responsibility, teaching our kids to you know have responsibility at an early age. Um, teaching them that they have to earn their way, um, not just you know spoiling them or babying them. Speak to them, address mental uh, mental health issues, and um, making them knowledgeable about it. Teaching them how to um, express their feelings properly. Right. Well, okay. Um, so some of the things that we also decided that we were going to do. Some of the parents don't know what, you, what they're trying to teach. Right. Parents need to, uh, the address the parents need to know what this right. method is as well as the children. So that's the only way the information can be passed on. Um, and to overcome those issues, having data of our own success rate. Um, Educating ourselves as, as parents on how this works and how to be advocates for this kind of um, possibility and accountability and something we just need by them. Very good. All right, clap it up for these folks over here. Teaching, teaching black children to be free. All right, but they say it's something about the, the best for last. Is that, is that the case? Let's hit the third group. Okay, go ahead. We believe that um, children should, um, they should have common knowledge, skills, they should have history of self, they should have, um, be able to know how to advocate for themselves and for others. Uh -huh. They should have academics as well. Um, they should have self-love, spiritualism, um, and not history. So we believe in the evening or on Saturday, the children should literally cook. They should clean. We feel children don't have chores anymore like they used to do. They should literally do those, those basic things. Some of them can't wash clothes, can't do anything. Burn them Yeah, yes. They should do those basic things. 
then at the history of self, we think should, we should just go back to talking. We should go back to researching ourselves. Sister Liz said, around your house, just put up posters and images of us, our, our people. Not just Africa, the 60s, the 70s, just positive images of ourselves. And then we believe they should also have those generational conversations. So maybe on the weekend, they can volunteer with elders because we believe that the, the talks with the elders are not there anymore. You know, we, we not get that information read down to us. Exactly. Then um, when you advocate for self, we believe, and others, we believe that you should, these children should be exposed to political, social, and cultural events. You know, when you're going to an event like this, you have children, which they should go to a town hall once or twice a month. They should go to some of those events or maybe to an OPSB board meeting and see what goes on. We believe that um, you should have a news comparison. Don't just let your children read the Tribune or the Data News Weekly or the Final Call. Let them read that Times Speaking Union or their paper and then compare it, those two stories, to our paper and see how they talk about us and then how we talk about ourselves. So then um, we, should, we should literally, and, and, and we have, when, when they came with all this internet and everything, the one thing they couldn't do was give it to them and not give it to us. So we're not using technology. So we should look at the laws and policies to see how we can change some of those things, because it's really the policies and the laws that need to be changed to change some of the things for us. Yeah, so then we believe academics as well. You can, um, if your children are still in school and they have that common core, I know the um, LDOE, the Louisiana Department of Education, have a website. There's some other websites um, via um, Education Superhero, but you should Google those things and find out how to do those things. You should also, you can um, also get a tutor as well. Um, but if you also they have some homeschool places that you can order information from those homeschool entities and teach your children in a, in a certain way. So, um, and then with self-love, spirituality and spirit, spiritualism, you should have a routine that your children do. It doesn't have to be religious, it can, have, it can be spiritual. You should pray, you should have an altar. Some people learn audio, some people learn visually, some people learn hands-on. So you may need to do research and find out what's the best way for you to learn. Some children can learn with the radio on, some, some of them can't. So that's some of the basic things that we feel that they need to do and we can help them do. Now resistance, we know some people must say them people know what they're doing. And we're going to say, when you look at the failures in the school, and does your child really, really, and generally know what they need to know? And then it's church and state. We put, this is our history. And then we put, once again, our survival is the understanding of all backgrounds. We know all backgrounds. Um, some of them helped in our being enslaved, and some of them helped in our being oppressed. So then some people going to say, our work. We work. They're going to say, we have no money. We have no support. We're going to say, well, if you don't have no money, you can go to the library. If you don't have no support, we basically want to know, do you know your neighbors? A lot of us don't know our neighbors these days. But if you say they don't know that other people is going through the same thing, they are, and you have options in the community, but do you just know those people in your church? And that's the <laughs> point. Now this is what a handful of people did in about 15, 20 minutes. So imagine if we put a lot more time on something like this. Does anybody think that we still need to be a part of somebody else's system? No. Because we can do this. Some of you all can say we can do this in two and a half hours a day. Imagine if we put more time on it. We saw the fact that the numbers of children that's in the school. Because we were talking about the masses of children, right? And that was the thing. There's only a small group of children. Yes, sir. So what you all put together was a method to teach black children how to be free. Is the public school going to teach them how to be free people? No. no. Is the private school going to teach them how to be free No. no. Where can they learn from in a school how to do this? Is there such a place? Yes. What? So you're saying that we already have what we need? Yes, we already have. And all we need to do is look at it and make it more beautiful so that it can grow. If that's the answer, she's saying homeschools are the answer. How do you overcome the resistance? How do you overcome that? Well, I had that brother had his hand up in the bed. So one one of the one of the things um, that I, I think we we fail to uh, really stay focused on is the cliche, or what seems to be a cliche for us, is that we are at war. 
and, and what you said earlier, is, and Brother Nelson said that we are one of the only people who, uh, are what people put their, their children in the hands of their enemy. Right. So when, when you speak about us um, teaching our children how to be free, we have to have, uh, we have to come to a consensus of what it means to really be free ourselves. So I think one, with, with, with many of us, like whether we want to admit it or, or not, we really are looking for our children to be smart children and, you know, do well successfully in this system. You know what I mean? Um, it's very few of us who are really looking for power. Uh, very few of us who are really looking to uh, set our children up to be in a position where they really intend to establish and develop power because that's a dangerous thing. So we're still battling to get our, and I'm me included, we are still battling to get out of our, our enslaved mindedness of just being able to survive and survive and be comfortable living, you know, well. That's why we say, well, my baby had a good school, had an a, a plus school, and theirs is not. But none, very few of us, even with the power to, will say, I understand that that system is completely against me. So I will bind myself with other African people to, to start teaching my own at whatever that, that cost is. Because we don't want to risk the, uh, the, the experience of experimenting with our own children. Because it is an experiment. When we started the, uh, the, the um, homeschool uh, and, like a couple years ago, that was, that's what people were, you know what I'm saying, one of the resistance was like, you know, you, what, like what's your proof already? I'm a father. I'm, I'm a father who loves not only my children, but your children like I love mine. Now that don't, you know what I'm saying, like, that ain't no proof, but you know, it's like we, it's... You were sincere. Yeah. But you say it's hard to, you totally disenfranchise yourself from that system. Most of us is just learning how to cope, trying to still cope. You know? Right, that's, and that's where most of us are. I mean, you know, and, it, and that's no judgment call or nothing. Right. It's, yeah. That's just a reality. But brother had a good point, though. I mean, could we possibly do worse? I mean, these are our own children. Could we do worse? These are our children. So, so that's that's I mean, that's a great point. That that's the brother brought up. How could we do worse? Yes. Um, just to piggyback on my brother over here, there was a, this speech where the guy said his father wanted to pursue this career, he wanted to be a criminal. And he didn't think that it would support his family. So he went and got a regular 9 to 5 job and worked for 30 years, and then the company laid him off, and he didn't have no retirement, and he had to struggle with everything. And so the son said, I looked at my father and I realized, if you can fail at what you don't want to do, why not go for what you do want to do? So we might as well, if we're, you know, if we're going to go back to that example you gave from the field, they were really ready to die. They were ready to die. You know, you have to peel away the layers sometimes to wake people up. Yeah? And we got to be willing to put that one in. You use uh, our children as an example when it comes down to spreading the word about something because they know how to do that excellently. They get, the, they get that news out like that. And we have to do the same thing. We have to get the news out to people who want better for their children because I worked in the school system and I see kids, parents playing musical schools with their kids. Their kids are going to three and four schools between first grade and third grade because they're not satisfied. If these parents knew about these African-centered uh, uh, organizations, maybe they will bring them there. So we got to get, we got to learn from our kids how to get information out and how to get that information to the parents. This might, this might be their answer. This might be what they're looking for. They don't know it though. Right. Indeed, I agree. So I want to thank y'all for that. We're, we're going to wrap it up. We're a little bit behind. But thank y'all for being patient. We're going to thank y'all after the time. Give yourself a round of applause. Man. We don't need other folks. Do we? And I want to say this before we before before I'm get to two, but I didn't finish for the whole introduction. I'm running behind. But one of the things that qualifies me with this is that 
I went to private school. I was put out of all of them. Very expensive. I went to public schools and I was put out of those too. Okay? Um, I have, I work, now my work, I work with uh, private schools, public schools, colleges, uh, other kinds of organizations to educate me. I really see this stuff like for real. I've also been an educator in African Center uh, homeschool myself. So I've seen this stuff all the different ways. And I haven't seen anything else that made our children feel better than being with their own people. I mean, I have seen nothing like that. When a child, so I remember witnessing this one morning in, a, in an African Center homeschool. Child runs in there and says, Brother Shaq, guess what? I can name every country in Africa. This was the third day of school, and they were excited. I don't see children excited in school no more. I see them beat down. I mean, they felt good. And because they were feeling good, they didn't realize they were doing college level work. You see? So, I think if we're going to have our children be free, we really do have to take this on ourselves. I can't find another option. What do you say? I mean, you were already trying to, right? Well, here's the thing. Sister was right. It is difficult. But I'm thinking like this. What happens if you don't? I know. Like you said, what's better? If we don't do this for our children, though, we're going to have another generation of poverty. And to add to what you're saying right now, oh, young people, a lot of them feel like we are allowing this to happen. We are dropping the ball. We don't have their backs. So, we have to restore their confidence in us. In us by acting, by doing something. I'm going to end the way I started. Yeah. We got to go get it. One thing, one thing is, to, to solidify this, I forget the sister's name, but she was saying that at one time, it was illegal for us to, to, to know anything. We to get it. So we were the first homeschoolers of our children. Right. So, and we got to a point where we know so we will come back into our environment. I love y'all family. Let me sell on that rock. Before we stop, we have another thing else. So, what you all put together was a method to teach black children how to be free.